hearts today, tonight, and I'm excited about what God is doing. But the Jordan's going to be coming to preach for us, and we're going to preach with him just like we worship with the singers. Amen? And I'm excited. How many is ready to hear the word of the Lord? Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise as he makes his way up here right now? Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody else. Amen. Why don't you just put your hands together one more time and give them a shout of praise if you're thankful. You are at the right place at the right hour with the right God. Whatever you need. Come on. He's a pain taker. Come on. He's a door opener. He's a prison shaker. I'm so thankful to be a part of the church and I want to say once again what an honor it is to get to be here with all of you today. Now, it's one thing to be able to preach, but it's another thing when you shred a guitar like your pastor. People that are just doubly talented, it makes me so... No, I'm just teasing. I'm very thankful for them. I'm very thankful for their friendship. Do you love your pastor? You ought to just put your hands together if you do. And to the church, I'd like to say, as a pastor's son, I'm very thankful to see the way that you honored your first family this morning. That's good and in order. And as a matter of fact, I think every Sunday should be Pastor Appreciation Sunday. But I'm just throwing that out there. And uh, it is such an honor that my dad's pastor is in the room tonight. Brother Royer, I honor you tonight. Sister Royer, thank you so much. Very good to see you. But most of all, I'm thankful that the Lord is in the house tonight. There's change in the room this evening. Come on, there's change in the room this evening. And I've just come to you to make one simple declaration in the Holy Ghost. He shall be changed. We shall be changed. Why don't you lift up your hands, ask the Lord to speak to you. Jesus, I thank you for the power of your spirit that's in this house. I'm asking you right now, Lord, to take over, take control. Do what you want to do, Jesus, and we'll be quick to give you the praise and the glory. And someone shout in Jesus' name. Amen. Step across an aisle, greet someone, shake their hand. Tell them how good they look. If they don't, it's okay to lie just this one time. Tell them how good they look anyway. Amen, amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Why don't you put your hands together one more time and give the Lord a great shout of praise if you're thankful for His goodness. In the book of Acts, in the 8th chapter, the Bible would have us to read that Saul was consenting unto his death. Now at this time, there was great persecution. And the Bible said that Saul made havoc of the church as he was hauling people and committing them into prison. Saul was in essence hunting down followers of Jesus Christ. But the Bible would say that even those that he persecuted that every place they traveled they went preaching the word of God because no matter what happens the enemy cannot stop the church the crowd could not kill it the grave could not contain it Pharaoh could not drown it Pilate could not judge it because you can't stop the church of the living God I'm coming to tell you tonight that sickness will not stop it people will not stop it. The government will not. No matter what you're facing tonight, you can't stop the church of the living God. That's why we used to sing, are you in the church triumphant? Uh, we used to talk about uh, that it's time to be uh, in the church of Zion. Uh, I'm coming to tell you tonight uh, that regardless of what happened, uh, that, the, uh, that the church goes on. Uh, because what you're going through is not the end of you. But this is the greatest time to be a part of the church of the 
living God. Your story is not over. It's just the beginning. The miracle is not over. It's just the I wish somebody believed it. I'm coming to tell you this is the beginning of breakthrough. This is the beginning of revival. This is the beginning of the greatest thing that God's ever done in your family. This is the beginning. I'm coming to tell you today uh, to serve you a message in the Holy Ghost. Uh, This is not the end of great things. Uh, It's not the end of the supernatural. Uh, The gifts of the Spirit aren't over. Uh, The outpouring's not over. But this is your hour. Uh, This is your time. Uh, And it's right now. It's right now. You ought to just tell somebody, uh, your hour is right now. And Saul continued to fight the church. uh, And Saul, yet threatening, uh, he comes against the church. And he asks of the high priest, uh, send me to the next town uh, to go and to persecute them. But the Bible would say uh, that on the journey that the Lord showed up, uh, he went from being encapsulated in hate uh, to encapsulated in the light of the Holy Ghost. Uh, He went from a journey uh, to go and kill them uh, and he became one of them. Uh, The Bible would say that as the Lord showed up uh, that he fell down uh, and he heard the voice speak out to him. Saul, Saul, uh, why persecutest thou me? Uh, I died for you, Saul. Uh, I love you, Saul. I want to change you. Why are you doing this to me, Saul? Uh, He had not a clue uh, what was happening to him but as he got up off of the ground he said Lord Lord he could have called him anything he wanted to but there was something in the spirit of Saul that knew that what he had just experienced it was greater than the king it was greater than anything he'd ever met he called him Lord for in the last days every knee will bow every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord forever. I'm coming to tell you uh, the word of the Lord uh, said that as the Lord began to speak to him uh, that the men beside him that traveled along with him uh, that they stood speechless uh, because real change uh, will shut the mouth of the accuser. Uh, Real change will leave your enemy uh, with not a word to say uh, because when real change gets a hold of you uh, we used to sing I don't walk like I used to walk. Uh, He made the difference. I don't talk like I, I don't go where I used to. There's something in my there's something about a change that when it gets on the inside they stood speechless not a word to say so to the person that's concerned of what people will say about you when you really commit to the change I'm coming to tell you who cares what they say who cares what they do there's a change for you tonight Saul arose from the earth and it's so interesting how it says it he arose from the earth his eyes were open but he saw no man his eyes were opened but he saw no man because the eyes it was talking about uh, was the spiritual eyes that were opened uh, for him to begin to comprehend uh, that the love of Jesus could even go to somebody like him. Uh, I'm coming to tell you today, uh, you've got to lift up your eyes uh, beyond your current circumstance. Uh, you've got to lift up your eyes uh, under the hills from which cometh your help. Uh, I know that the storm has been great uh, and when you look around you, uh, all All you can see is the adversity uh, and all you can see is the trial uh, but when you look up uh, and you look over the circumstance uh, you can see a God with a plan uh, and he's got a plan for a man like you and me Uh, I'm coming to tell you uh, he opened up his eyes uh, and he saw no man Uh, he was three days without sight uh, did neither eat nor drink Uh, and there was one that the Lord began to speak to uh, and he said 
said, oh, Ananias, I am sending you to go and pray for the man named Saul. Because when you really change, it won't take you out of the church. It'll send you into the prayer room. When you really change, it'll draw you closer to God than you've ever been. Don't tell me you've really changed if you're not praying. Don't tell me you've really changed if you're missing Sunday night. But the Bible said that when Ananias saw him, he was in the prayer room. I'm coming to tell you if you missed it tonight uh, you missed something that was going on uh, there was a stirring in the prayer room to this evening uh, as the Lord began to move uh, I'm coming to tell every person in this room uh, God is drawing you uh, to deeper prayer uh, than you've ever been to before uh, and when they prayed uh, the place was shaken uh, prayer is the key to harvest uh, prayer is the key to revival uh, prayer is the key to breakthrough uh, I've got to ask you, uh, would you not pray but for an hour? Is there somebody in the room tonight uh, that would say, God, I'm ready to pray? Here's what the word of the Lord said. He said, Ananias, he's seen in a vision you coming to him and putting your hand upon him uh, that he might receive a sign. And Ananias, uh, even the man of God said, whoa, 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 Lord, what are you talking about? Uh, isn't this the one that persecuted, the one uh, that was killing people for your name? Uh, isn't this him, Lord? Uh, I have heard by many people uh, of this man. He said, people have talked about him. Uh, and I've heard by many. Uh, he argued with God. Uh, haven't you heard about his reputation haven't you heard the things that he does well lord we want everybody in the church uh, except people like him we want everybody in the church uh, except the drug addict and the killer and the extra lord send us the people that and this is what the lord said he he said ananias no 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 uh, he said this is my chosen vessel i, I want to tell you tonight uh, that god is not worried about your pedigree uh, he's not worried about what side of the tracks you came from he's not worried about your yesterday but he is the chain breaker he is the door opener he is the prisma he is whatever you need I'm coming to tell you he looked not at his failure but he looked at his future because I've come to proclaim to you tonight that what is ahead of you is greater than what's behind you I'm coming to just say it right here. Uh, there's some people uh, that spend their, all of eternity uh, looking back at their past. Uh, my failure, my problem, uh, the way I messed up, what I did, my this, my that, everything that I've been. But I'm coming to tell you, uh, if you spend your entire existence uh, looking at what's behind you, uh, how will you ever see what's ahead of you? Uh, well, I just feel to say this right now. Uh, you are not exempt from receiving the Holy Ghost. Uh, God is not angry at you. Uh, he loves you. God does not hate you. Uh, he wants to fill you. God uh, is not done with you. Uh, but this could be the beginning of your breakthrough. Yeah. <laughs> and let me just take another step. Uh, God doesn't care what people's opinions are of you. <laughs> Not one little bit. And I've heard people say it. Well, my Lord, if I ever walked in the church, uh, everybody would turn and look at me and think, what is he? Then shame on them. Because the church was never called to be the judge, the jury, or the executioner. Uh, but I'm coming to preach to the hospital of the broken. I'm coming to preach to the hospital of the addicted. Uh, the hospital of those that are waiting uh, for somebody to come and restore them. Uh, and I've got a question. Uh, will you love them back to grace? Will you do it? Will, uh, I really need an answer tonight. Uh, is there anybody in the room uh, that would say, God, send us who nobody wants. Uh, Lord, send us the bound. Uh, send us the addicted. Uh, send us the lost. Uh, send us the broken. Uh, and we will restore them. Because real restoration... You see, we have no word in the English for what true restoration means. For when you look at restoration, it means that when something is removed to be put back to where it was originally. 
but that's not what the word means in the Hebrew for the true meaning of restoration it's not to put it back where it used to be but to put it ahead of where it was when it fell I said to put it ahead of it was from the place that it fell I'm coming to ask you tonight will you restore them Will you love them? Will you pray for them? Will you love their family? Will you love their children? Will you teach them Bible studies? Will you fellowship with them? Then lift up your hands all over this house. And by the authority of the word of God, let a revival of the broken fall on you now. I'm coming to tell you that the Bible said, he said, go thy way, for he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name. Because it doesn't matter who your daddy is. Because your name has the name of Jesus Christ attached to it. He said he's called to bear my name. And Ananias went his way, went into the temple. He put his hands on them. And he said, this brother Saul, Brother, brother Saul, he said, Saul, I could talk about you like you're not as great as me. Saul, I could talk about you. Oh, Saul, the new convert. Saul, the guest, he said, no, uh, brother Saul, uh, because it's under the blood of Jesus uh, that when you begin to be restored, uh, I'm not expecting you to be behind me, uh, but I want you to be with me. Uh, I want you to work alongside me. Uh, I want you to hear me tonight. Uh, I dare say to you this evening. That people whom the church has disqualified, God has qualified. I dare say to you that people that we've talked about and we've claimed that it's not gossip if it's true. No, no, that's not the truth. When's the last time you talked about someone that could have been called of the Lord? Uh, but every time you brought up their past, you put them back to their point of failure, back to their point of trial, back to their point of heartache. Uh, I'm coming to tell you. He said, brother, yeah. brother Saul, brother Saul, brother Saul, brother Saul, brother Saul. Uh, even Jesus that appeared unto thee as the way came us, uh, has sent me that thou might receive thy sight uh, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and immediately the scales fell from his eyes uh, and he saw again. Uh, and the Bible said that he immediately arose and was baptized uh, because real change brings you to the point uh, that says right now is the time. Uh, right now is the hour. Uh, I'm not waiting for another Sunday. Uh, baptize me now. Uh, I'm not waiting till another service. Uh, baptize me now. Uh, I'm not waiting to receive the Holy Ghost uh, to the next revival. Uh, baptize me now, Lord. Yes. The Bible said, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues uh, that he is the Son of God uh, because real change makes you talk about it. Uh, I want to tell you what the word of the Lord says uh, for we overcome by the blood of the Lamb uh, and the word of our testimony. Somebody said, I can't teach a Bible study. I don't know the ins and outs of Scripture. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. That's not what the Word of the Lord said. It said, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, uh, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. When you were baptized in the name of Jesus, uh, and He baptized you with His Spirit, in the Word of our testimony, uh, I would imagine uh, if you would have heard Saul teaching a Bible study, uh, he would have ran up and said, look, dude, uh, I don't know how to explain it, uh, but let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Uh, and if he did it for me he can do it for you uh, here's what I'm coming to tell you uh, you need to not focus on what you don't know uh, and focus on what you do know uh, if you've got the Holy Ghost uh, and you've got a testimony uh, you're an overcomer and newsflash Jack uh, you have what they need and how will they hear without a preacher how will they hear without a preacher? Let me tell you, the Bible said that all that heard him, that they were amazed and said, isn't this he which destroyed them that called on the name of Jesus? Because people have always struggled with an identity change. They were caught off guard by what God began to do because they must have believed that God's grace had a limit. How many times have we preached? Oh, 
Oh, to the addict, God can fill you with. The, how many people do you know that God can heal the addicted and fill them with the Holy Ghost? Oh, to the adulterer, God can make you brand new. He can fill you with his spirit. But I got a question for you. When's the last time that you believed that the grace of God could reach to the saint that walked out? When's the last time you really believed that the grace of God could reach to the preacher that failed? They thought that his grace had a limit, but his grace had no limit. His blood knows no boundaries. That's why we used to sing, for it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley because it's the blood that gives us strength from day to day. And no matter the trial and no matter the person, the blood of Jesus never loses its power. Never. Never. They struggled with it. Uh, but Saul had a change. Uh, for in Acts 13 it said, Then Saul, uh, who was also called Paul, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, from Saul of Tarsus uh, to Paul filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and it was said of him that he was one of them uh, which turned this world uh, upside down. He turned his world upside down. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you really believe that God can do it through you? Do you really believe that God can do it through anybody? Uh, that God could take a murderer uh, and make him a soul winner? Uh, that God could take an addict uh, and make him a preacher? Uh, that God could take somebody that was broken uh, and make him whole again? Because it was Saul that became Paul that wrote so much of the New Testament that in 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, uh, he was talking about the rapture. But I want you to hear what he said. He said, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when the dead in Christ shall arise, when the trumpet sounded. Uh, he said in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, he was looking at the promise of the church, uh, but looking back to the place that God brought him from uh, because he remembered on the road to Damascus uh, that in a moment uh, when his eyes begin to twinkle with blindness uh, from the light of the presence of God, uh, that in the moment, uh, in the twinkling of an eye, here's basically what he was saying. Hey, uh, I remember what God did for me. Uh, and if he did it for me he's gonna do it for you too I'm coming to tell you uh, he is the same yesterday today and forever because one day here's what he said the corruptible will put on incorruption and the portal uh, will put on immortality uh, and death uh, is swallowed up in victory uh, for I submit to you that one day when the eastern sky is open uh, and the dead in Christ shall arise uh, that as Paul begins to walk in the gates he got a burroshatada basai that as Paul begins to walk through the gates uh, that the sound of the martyred uh, that he killed will begin to shout and cheer uh, and say come on Paul uh, you made it uh, come on Paul Paul, uh, you made it to glory. Uh, come on, Paul, uh, you made it to eternity uh, because this is the kingdom. Uh, we don't hold the past against you. Uh, we don't hold the failure against you, uh, but we're going to cheer you to the finish line. Uh, we're going to cheer you to glory. Uh, I've got to ask you, uh, is there anybody that's ready to restore? Amen. Anybody? Someone shout a change is coming. Uh, Somebody shout, a change is coming. Uh, no, you need to reach over and tell somebody, uh, a change is coming. Uh, a change is coming. A change is coming. Uh, I'm coming to tell you that a woman in East Texas, uh, she left the church at nine years old. Uh, he cut up a satire. At 1960, uh, she was sick unto death, uh, down to 90 pounds. They've been to every doctor, didn't know what to do. The doctor said, we don't know what's happening, but at the rate you're going, you're going to die. Uh, she was married. She had kids by this point. Uh, had been out of church for so long, and she looked at her husband, who'd never been to a Pentecostal church, and said, husband, pick me up and put me in the car. Uh, he said, where are we going? She said, I need you to take me uh, down to the pastor's house. Uh, he said, which pastor? She said, no, the Pentecostal pastor. He looked at her and said, what are you talking about? She said, I I've never really talked about it, uh, but I used to 
be one of them. Uh, and I remember seeing people healed under the power uh, of the Holy Ghost. He said, I got no other place to go. Uh, you got to take me to his house right now. Uh, they pulled up to the house and the wife came out uh, and saw them and introduced herself and said, what's going on? Uh, and he said, my wife is sick and I don't know why she wants to be here. Uh, but she asked me to bring her to your house. Uh, I want to tell you that pastor's wife opened up the back door, uh, crawled in the back seat and laid her hands upon that woman. Uh, the Holy Ghost began to fall upon her. Uh, she hadn't been in the church since nine years old. Uh, but in a moment, uh, as the Spirit of God began to fall, uh, she was refilled with the baptism uh, of the Spirit of God. Uh, and she was instantly healed uh, by the power of the name of Jesus. That woman for three years, Pastor, that woman for three years went to church by herself. Her husband might come on Christmas. You know, he's one of those CEOs. Christmas and Easter only. Real important people. Three years she'd come to church by herself Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday. Her husband would look at her and say, where are you going? She said, I'm going to church. And he'd say, oh, come on, you don't really believe in all that hocus pocus, do you? And she said, did you forget where I was when the Holy Ghost fell on me? She said, I believe it because I've seen it for myself. That's why the word would say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. For three years she went to service. Every once in a while he'd show up, he'd sit in the back. There was something interesting interesting that all of the unsaved husbands as soon as altar call would happen they'd all stand up turn around walk outside stand on the back porch and smoke that's just what they did he said it was another sunday night i hadn't been to church in a while i showed up he said as the preacher began to preach i felt conviction begin to come upon me he said i literally felt the power of god beginning to fall upon me he said it scared me because i had not a clue what was happening he said the preacher said all right everybody stand up he said and just like i always did i stood up i turned and i went to walk out but when i opened my eyes i realized as I turned the wrong way. He said, son, it turns out that the wrong way was the right way. He said, I walked down to an altar, lifted up my hands. God filled me with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I was baptized in the name of Jesus. He said, I used to gamble every paycheck away, uh, but now the only thing I'll gamble is everything I've got, uh, that the blood of Jesus will work for anybody, uh, because if it worked for me, it'll work for them too. Let me tell you something about this man. Uh, this man started three churches. He restarted two. Uh, most of his family is saved. He's got sons in full time preaching the word of God, and one of them stands before you tonight. Because that man was my grandfather. And that woman was my grandmother. Uh, and I stand here tonight to tell you. Uh, I want you to hear me right now. Uh, I stand here tonight to tell you that I'm nobody special. I'm nobody from anywhere. Uh, just a kid from a small town. Uh, but I've come to tell you that God does not care about your pedigree. Uh, but real change will give you a lineage that the devil can't wipe out. Uh, and people can't take away from you. Uh, here's what I'm coming to tell you. Uh, the greatest journey of your life. Uh, we'll start with one single step. Just one step. Sister, I watched you as you started walking all around this church. Uh, and you probably thought, what on earth am I doing? You know what you are doing? Uh, you're taking one step towards your journey. <laughs> I watch as people, people walking, running all throughout the aisles tonight. Uh, and I've heard people ask, why do you run the aisles? Uh, because I'm running towards the place God has taken me. Uh, every step you take, uh, it's just one step of a journey. Uh, let me tell you, my granddaddy would tell me uh, that he was in a service in Kirbyville, Texas. Uh, a man walked into the back. Uh, uh, you see, he was the town drunk. Uh, everybody that would ever see him would know that, man, he'd stumble around around. He, every time you saw him, he was drunk. Uh, but one day, old Mr. Lewis walked into church. Uh, he caught up my son on my as the Holy Ghost began to move upon him, uh, Mr. Lewis walked right down the center aisle, lifted up his hands uh, as the Spirit of God began to fall upon him. Uh, he went from being drunk on alcohol to being drunk in the Spirit. Uh, every elder that's ever talked to me about it would say that you'd show up to the house of God. Uh, and every Sunday, Mr. Lewis would take off turning cartwheels uh, all throughout the aisle. Uh, as a matter of fact, he said one day that somebody asked him, uh, Mr. Lewis, why do you do that? Uh, he said, because I live 
lived hard for the devil uh, and I've got to live harder for the Lord. Uh, I got to ask you, when's the last time you danced in the spirit uh, like you used to dance in the honky tonk? Uh, I'm coming to tell you tonight, uh, that's what changed us. Uh, that's what changed us Uh, my daddy would tell me in Rosevine, Texas uh, that a man walked into the back of the church Uh, everybody knew who the man was he's a tough man he's a fighter worked out on the oil rig Uh, oh Mr. Leon Loggins many of you know Leon Loggins don't you tonight Uh, Mr. Leon Loggins walked into the house of God uh, one evening as the spirit of God began to move upon him Uh, you see people would talk about him he's a tough man and a fighting man Uh, he's a man that you did not want to mess with because of Leon could ever catch you with a right hand he'd knock you out clean see that's the kind of reputation that Leon had when he walked into the house of God it was said that people looked all around and said my word what is Leon doing in this place but my dad would say that Leon came down to an altar one Sunday night and lifted up his hands said that the people began to gather around him as they started to pray maybe some of you were in that service as they started to pray over Leon he lifted up his hands and prayed he finally stopped he said hang on I know what I got to do they said Leon took off to the back of the church Uh, and in just a moment they looked back and Leon started turning somersaults down the front Uh, he got all the way down to the front threw his hands in the air Uh, God filled him with the Holy Ghost for the first time they said Leon why did you do that Uh, he said because I'm a prideful man Uh, and the Lord said if I just break my pride and step out uh, if I just take one step in the journey uh, that God would meet me where I was Uh, let me tell you what happened Uh, they took Leon down to Granny's Pond one Sunday Uh, Granny's Pond he'd show up there were snakes all over the pond Uh, they said as they walked up brother they'd begin to pray uh, and they'd curse and all of the snakes would go to the other end they'd say I curse these snakes in Jesus name they said they literally watched the snakes go to the other end they said Leon walked down in Granny's Pond he was baptized in the name of Jesus and he was filled with the Holy Ghost again but something began to happen because people started coming from all around and they said if Leon can be filled with the Holy Ghost then anybody can be filled with the Holy Ghost they said a revival began to break out and one Sunday when the fame of what was happening began to spread all around they said that the song leader came up and the organ fired up and the cymbals fired up and somebody got out of timbrel and they started to play it and they sang a song and said they baptized Leon Hoggins uh, at Granny's Pond last Sunday. Uh, Jesus gained a soul, but heaven, uh, Jesus gained a soul, uh, and Satan lost a good right arm. Uh, they shouted hallelujah when Leon's head went under, because uh, this time he went under uh, for the Lord. Uh, it reminded me of the psalmist that said, uh, He'll give you a song uh, the angels cannot sing. Uh, glory, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Uh, I want you to know that a revival broke out uh, because one man took a step. Uh, a harvest broke out uh, because one man took a step. I'm coming to ask you, uh, is there anybody ready to take the step? Stand to your feet and lift up your hands. Uh, I'm coming to tell you uh, we shall uh, be changed. We shall uh, be changed. We shall uh, be changed. I'm coming to tell you right now uh, that regardless of who you are, where you're from, uh, what you've been through, uh, that there's a change that's in the room for you tonight. There's, I said there's a change for you in the room tonight. Uh, and I'm coming to ask you, uh, is there anybody ready? Come on, is there anybody ready? Uh, I want you to look at your neighbor and ask him, uh, are you ready for a change? Uh, Come on, look at him and ask him right now, uh, are you ready for a change? Uh, Come on, I want you to grab the hand of that neighbor uh, and I want you to come out of your seats. Let's come down to the front together. Uh, Come on, from the front to the back, everybody come down. He caught on my son. Come on, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You hear me tonight? This is a day of change for somebody in the room. Come on, I said it's a day of change for some. Come on, y'all, just fill in here real tight. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's a day of change for somebody in the room tonight. 
Come on, with every eye closed in the building except the ministry looking right now. If you're in the room tonight and you just lift up a hand and say, I'm ready for change. Come on, come on, come on real high. Maybe you're addicted. Maybe you're bound. Whatever it is you're going through, you'd say, I'm ready for change. All right, ministry, come and help me right now. You know who they are. I want you to find somebody to pray with. Come on, everybody ought to find somebody to pray with right now. Now, here's what I want to tell you. Here's what I want to tell you. If you want to receive the Holy Ghost, you got to pray out loud with your mouth. It's a verbal thing. He chose the thing that could not be tamed, and that is your tongue to fill you with the Spirit. So right now, I want you to begin to lift up your voice. And don't worry about the words that are coming out of your mouth. But I want you to begin to pray to the Creator right now. Just whatever you feel coming out of you, I want you to lift up your voice. It's not going to be anything you've ever heard. It's not going to be anything you'll understand. But it's the power of the Spirit that God's wanting to bring through you right now. Come on, you can be filled you can be filled by the authority of the word of God by the power in the name of Jesus we speak right now that the Holy Ghost begin to fall we speak right now that chains begin to be broken come on now we're getting ready to praise him we speak under the authority of the almighty God let there be broken chains let bondage be released come on let's sing now let's sing now